So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up ANSYS Workbench. You want to start off by placing here a Fluid Flow Fluent. Click on Import Geometry and then bring in your step file from SolidWorks. Then right click Geometry again and click on Edit Geometry in Design Modeler. Once you're in the Design Modeler, click on the Generate button. Click on the XY plane, then click the Sketch button. Click on Sketching, then click Rectangle. Now, drag this rectangle and cover the entire surface of your SolidWorks drawing. Then click on Dimensions. Now we're going to set the horizontal and vertical dimensions like this. For this H1 dimension, I'm going to set it at 7 meters. For the H2 dimension, I'm going to set it at 13 meters. For the V3 dimension, I'm going to set it at 3 meters. Then I'm going to click on Extrude. And then I'm going to click on Apply. Under this Operation section, we're going to put Add Frozen. In this FD1 section, we're going to put 1.5 meters. In this Direction section, we're going to put both Symmetric. Then we're going to click on Generate. Open this button here and then click on Solid. We're going to call this body Fluid Domain. Then we're going to change this Fluid Solid tab to Fluid. Then go ahead and click on Tools and Symmetry. Then switch the number of planes to 2. For the Symmetry Plane 1, click on this XY plane and then click Apply. For this Symmetry Plane 2, click on the ZX plane and then click Apply. Then click Generate. Then click on Create, Boolean. Then click on this Operation button and select Subtract. Select this for the target body. Make sure that you have the body selector turned on. For the tool bodies, click on everything except the fluid domain that we just created and click Apply. Then click Generate. Then click on this XY plane and click the Sketch button. Go to Sketching and click on this rectangle. Now go ahead and make the rectangle like this. Then go to Dimensions and we're going to dimension it the same way, horizontally and vertically. For the H4, we're going to put 4 meters. For the H5, we're going to put 8 meters. And for the V6, we're going to put 1.75 meters. Then click Extrude and Apply. For the FD1 depth, we're going to put 0.75 meters, then click Generate. Now click on Solid, and we're going to name it Body of Interest, so just BOI. Now we should have something that looks like this, and our geometry is completed. Now go back to the home screen and double click on this Mesh button. Now we're ready to start creating the mesh. Click on Units, and change it to Metric, Millimeters, Kilograms, Newtons. Then click on Mesh, and then under Element Size, let's put 150. Then click on Sizing, under Max Size, put 150. Then go to Quality, and under the Smoothing section, go ahead and put it on High. Under the Mesh metric, go ahead and click on Orthogonal. Now you should have something that looks sort of like this. Then click Generate. So go ahead and right click on Mesh, go to Insert, and click on Sizing. Make sure to have this Full Body Selector turned on. Click here, then click on this Geometry section and click Apply. Under Type, go ahead and change it to Body of Influence. Under this Bodies of Influence section, click here and then click Apply. Under Element Size, we're going to change it to 30 millimeters. Open this Connections tab. Right click on Contacts and then delete it. Next, open up this Geometry tab, click on BOI and click on Hide Body. Then right click on Mesh, Insert, Sizing. Then select the Face Selector, click on Box Select and highlight everything from left to right. 
that would highlight all the elements in our motorcycle. Then click on single select, zoom in and click here. That way we just have all the elements of our motorcycle and rider selected. Then click apply. For the element size, we're gonna make it 15 millimeters. Then click generate. Then right click on mesh, go to insert and click on inflation. Make sure you have this body selector selected and go to single select and click here. Then click apply. For the boundary, go ahead and have this face selector selected and click box selection and highlight from left to right your motorcycle. Then go to single select, zoom in and click this section here so that just the motorcycle is selected. Then go to boundary and click apply. Then under inflation option, click on first layer thickness. For the first layer height, we're gonna make it 0 0.001. The maximum layers is gonna be 20 and click generate. Then click geometry and click this button here. This will make it a lot easier to move the body around and orient it in space without it lagging. Then click this face and go to create name selection. Call this inlet and click OK. Then go to the back face, create name selection and call this outlet, then click OK. Then click on this face, but make sure to get this under part of the motorcycle. Then go to create name selection and name it symmetry and click OK. Then click on the bottom, create name selection and call it ground and click OK. Then click on these two faces, go to create name selection and call it tunnel walls and click OK. Then click on mode box selection. Then go ahead and drag a box, a rectangle like this to get the bottom parts that are under the wheel. These parts are necessary to run the fluid analysis. Then go to create name selection and call it wheel radii. Then click up here and click single select and make sure you select all the faces of the wheels. Then go to create name selection and call it rear wheel. Then go to the front wheel and do the exact same thing. Once you select all the faces, go ahead and go to create name selection and call it front wheel. Click on box select and highlight everything. Then go to single select and take this part out. Then right click on this, go to create name selection and call it motorcycle walls. Then click on name selection and then click on this button that says repair overlapping named selections. Then we're gonna go ahead and rename this motorcycle walls. So now we have everything done. Go back to the main menu, right click on mesh and click update. Then double click on setup. Click this button that says double precision. And for our computers, we put both of these values on four. It depends on how many cores are in your computer. So everybody's numbers might be different. Then click start. Be patient with these simulations as they may take some time. So we're gonna keep all of these default values here. Then we're gonna to go to viscous. And we're gonna use this K omega model. And we're gonna keep all the parameters default. Then click OK. Then go to boundary conditions, zone type, and double click inlet. Then you could select the velocity that you want the air to be moving at. We're gonna put it at 100 meters per second. Just go ahead and go through these and click apply for all of them. We're gonna keep those consistent.
Then double click on front wheel and select moving wall. Then click on rotational. So the front and the rear wheel both have a rotation axis origin. The next step is to figure out exactly what these numbers are. So to do that, go back to the main page, right click on geometry, and then click on edit geometry in space claim. Once you're here, click on the Z icon, and then click on the front tire. Then go to the design tab and click on this icon here. Then click on the rear wheel and click on the icon again. Then go to the measure tab and click on measure and check this box that says show XYZ vectors. Then click on this origin and then click on the front wheel origin. These are the values that you're going to be putting in for your axis origin for the front wheel. However, these are in millimeters, so make sure you put them in in meters. So this 1930 millimeters is actually 1.93 meters. Then simply do the same thing for the rear wheel. Click on the origin, then click on the origin of the rear wheel. And then pay attention to these X and Y values, then put them in your simulation in meters. I just wanted to quickly go over how to find the rotation axis origin. Just note that this is a different model to the one I'm running the simulation on. I simply wanted to demonstrate the process of how to find the rotation axis origin. So due to the right hand rule, this Z on the bottom right hand corner is going to be equal to 1. The reason is because you can see that the air is moving towards the bike, so the wheels are going to rotate counterclockwise. If you take your right hand with your thumb out and you rotate the same direction as the wheels counterclockwise, you can see that your thumb is facing towards you. So you can see that this positive Z direction in blue here in this blue cube is facing towards you. So that's why that Z is equal to 1. So for the rotation axis origin, we're going to put negative 2.2. Now this will vary depending on where your origin is. For the Y, for us, it's 0 0.3025. And then we're going to leave this X and Y 0. For our speed in radians per second, all you have to do is divide your velocity by your wheel's radius. And make sure the wheel's radius is in meters. So again, all you have to do is take your velocity in meters per second and divide it by the radius of your wheel in meters. Our speed is 333.3 repeating radians per second. Then click apply. Then double click ground, moving wall, and this is our speed in meters per second, which we said was 100. Then double click on motorcycle walls and click apply. Then click on rear wheel and click moving wall rotational. Our rotation axis origin for the rear wheel, the X is negative 0.25 and the Y is 0.3129498. And again, we're going to leave this 0, 0, and 1. Our speed, like we said, is our velocity divided by the radius of our rear wheel. In this case, that speed in radians per second would be 321.646. Then click apply. Then double click on tunnel walls. Click on specified shear. And leave all of these 0, 0, 0. Then click apply. Then lastly, click on wheel radii, click specified shear, leave it all on zero, and click apply. Then click on reference values, go down, and select inlet. Then click on results, projected areas, select front wheel, motorcycle walls, and rear wheel. For the minimum feature size, put 0 .00005, then click compute. Now, in this area, type in what it computed. So for us, it's going to be 0.2495214. Then click Close. Then go to SolidWorks and measure the length of your body. You could click on the Measure tool, select the front and the back, and it should give you the length of your body. Our length is 3224.94 millimeters. So you can see our length is around 3.225 meters. So that's what we're going to put into ANSYS Fluent. 
Then right click on report definitions, go to new, force report, and click on drag. Then you can name this coefficient of drag or CD. Then click on front wheel, motorcycle walls, and rear wheel. Then click on report file, report plot, and print to console. Then click OK. Then right click on report definitions, new, force report, then click drag. Now click this button that says drag force and rename it drag. Then click on the front wheel, the motorcycle walls, the rear wheel, then click report file, report plot, print to console, then click OK. Then right click on report definitions, new, force report, then click lift. Then click on lift force, rename this lift, click on the front wheels, the motorcycle walls, and the rear wheel. Then click on report file, report plot, print to console, then click OK. Click on methods to make sure everything looks like this. Then click on initialization and select initialize. Now double click run calculation. For the number of iterations, it's up to you. We're going to put 500. Then click calculate. Now you're running your simulation. Make sure to be saving your file. And remember, at any point during the simulation, you can click stop in the bottom right hand corner, save the file, and come back and continue to run it later on. <laughs>